What's going on people, it's Jake, and welcome back to another Elden Ring discussion video. Today I'd like to talk about Melania and why she would have been provoked into attacking us right away. I wanted to have this discussion because I've always found it strange that even if we know the location of Mikola in Mogwin's palace, we still aren't given the option to at least tell Melania this information. She had been in a deep sleep here at the base of the Halo Tree since her soldier brought her back here after her battle against Radon. So you think this information would have been well received by her and all of Mikola's followers who have been looking for him. Whether we know this information or not, by the time we enter the Halo Tree, we are attacked by everyone and everything without any hesitation. In fact, we are attacked by pretty much everything throughout the lands between, with the exception of a very small few. But even those few know exactly what and who we are just by looking at us. Oh yes, tarnished are we? Come to the lands between for the Elden Ring, hmm? You're a tarnished. I can see it, and I can also see that you're not after my throat. A pleasure to meet thee, Tarnished. I am the Witch Renner. I'd heard tell of a Tarnished hurtling about atop a spectral steed. Fell Tarnished. What do you want? I told the all-hearing brute that I possess no such medallion. That thug made off with a precious necklace. I need someone to retrieve it. Only... He, too, is tarnished. No. No, but the help is very much appreciated, even from a tarnished. Despite appearances, nobility is no prerequisite to serving the true order. I think these examples make it apparent that no matter where you are from in the lands between or what groups you're a part of, being a tarnished isn't exactly a secret. It's widely known that the Greater Will has brought us back to the lands between as a last resort to mend the Elden Ring back together. Some support you in this cause, some try to take advantage of you, but most don't even think it's possible for you to do so. So why not try to stop you? You're trying to take a powerful great rune from one of their leaders, like Godric's soldiers and Margit trying to stop you from entering Stormvale, or Radon's followers allowing you to fight him to obtain his great rune, even though they're likely just seeing it as an excuse to see some champions die in battle against their once great leader. I'm sure this isn't the first festival that's been held at Redmain Castle, which means champions have failed time and time again until you finally put Radon to rest. No one really believes that our journey is something actually possible to complete, but our reason for living is only possible because the guidance of grace has allowed it. Our initial purpose is solidified by Enya and the two fingers of the round table hold. The greater will has long renounced the demigods. Tarnished, show no mercy. Have their heads. Take all they have left. Indeed. This is pretty clear, cut and dry instructions from the Greater Will. Do what it takes to retrieve as many great runes as possible to mend the Elden Ring. As we know, we don't need all of the great runes to complete this goal. Only two are required. So getting more great runes would depend on the particular tarnished. I hesitate to use the word greed, but if only two are necessary to mend the Elden Ring, obtaining the rest seems unnecessary unless that Tarnish just wants to acquire more power, just like the demigods themselves did starting the Shattering War. Now it isn't known how public these exact instructions by the Two Fingers are, but like I said, it seems like everyone else already knows. So this gives us a good enough reason for Melania to attack us on sight. He would know that we are there to obtain her and possibly Mikola's great rune. This would obviously be at the disadvantage of the Empyrean twins, and as the blade of Mikola, she is the best equipped to stop us, or at least she was, as I do believe Melania, at this moment when we find her, is struggling physically and mentally. The physical struggles are obvious, she's lost most of her limbs that needed to be replaced with unalloyed gold prosthetics, and the scarlet rot has spread to her eyes, which are completely covered, meaning she has lost all vision. 
This is most likely the reason that Melania's movements are so sporadic, at least in regards to her waterfowl dance. She wildly swings her sword around herself, creating a sort of bubble that makes it extremely difficult to dodge. While her movements are still beautiful and somewhat calculated, it's not a stretch to call some of her movements random or without precision, because she can't exactly pinpoint where we are. Now the tragedy of Melania's story is that she is in a state of suffering, sleeping and waiting for her brother to return to her as she continues to rot away. It also seems like her pride and ego are damaged. She doesn't want to be the goddess of rot makes it very clear what she wants to be, the Blade of Mikola. Of course, we get annoyed at how many times she tells us this, as we most likely die to her many times over. She will say the same thing, that she is Melania, Blade of Mikola. Now this might be a bit of a stretch, but someone who is actually prideful or proud of who they are doesn't have to voice that to the world over and over again. They don't have to state the fact that they've never been defeated. They would simply just take pride in that fact and let their reputation speak for itself. But it seems like Melania has lost that pride in herself and is actively trying to convince herself that she doesn't need the power of the rot and that she is powerful enough as she is. There is something I must return to Melania. The will that was once her own. The dignity. The sense of self that allowed her to resist the call of the Scarlet Rot, the pride she abandoned, to meet Radan's measure. It could be possible that Melania is suffering from some sort of delusion or delirium, and she has to keep mentioning that she is Melania, Blade of Mikola. She has to keep telling herself that she has never been defeated, even though the argument can be made that she was defeated and had to resort to something beyond herself in the battle with Radon, just as Millicent mentions. She had to resort to the power that is slowly killing her, and now, to slow that growing power of the rot, she has to convince herself that she doesn't need it, or it never even happened. In short, she has basically lost her mind, and needs to convince herself that she is powerful enough on her own. So when we come walking in, she sees it as another opportunity to prove to herself and to the rot growing inside of her brain that she is Melania, Blade of Mikola. Now I would love it if it were possible to talk to Melania at some point, possibly having the option between phase one and two to tell her where Mikola is located if we had gone to Mogwin's palace before meeting her in the Halig tree. And you guys seem to feel the same, as almost 90% of 15,000 votes agreed that this hypothetical interaction with Melania would have been interesting and made sense. Now some of you mentioned that yes, it would have been awesome, but if we could do this, that'd be too happy of an ending to the questline. FromSoft loves to make us cry and needs a sad ending to every friendly character we meet in all of their games. Now I completely agree with this, but I don't think this interaction would lead to a happy ending. Could you imagine how Melania would react to seeing Mikola like this? Probably not too well, considering she's already in a pretty fragile state of mind. It would just be so interesting to at least have the choice to tell her Mikola's location, if we know it, or just kill her in between phases. And if we choose to kill her, she would become the goddess of rot, and it ends up being a permanent choice. So when you go back to fight her, if you die, she'll just transition from her first phase to the second without the choice. Maybe just having this knowledge of Mikola could have resulted in a different cutscene, but ultimately the same outcome. Just like with Sif and Artorius in Dark Souls 1. While it led to the same outcome, it gave a completely new meaning and tone to the fight. It was so tragically sad. Now I'm not complaining about what we got by any means, just bringing up some potential possibilities. And who knows, maybe all of this will be possible in the DLC because it does have some serious implications toward time travel. And we know it's potentially possible because of our fight with the Dragon Lord. Man, I really can't wait for DLC to come out. I hope the release date is at least announced at Summer Game Fest this year, even though I'm almost positive we won't see DLC until next year at some point. I'll be reacting to it live over on Twitch, so go drop a follow and come hang out there if you want to. That's all for today's video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.
Take care.